In this video, we learn how to calculate the coordinates of stationary points along a curve's length. Now, given some curve with an equation y equals to f of x, a stationary point is any point along its length at which the derivative function is equal to zero. In other words, a stationary point is any point along the curve's length at which f dash of x equals to zero, which we could also write dy dx equals to zero. Typically, stationary points can be local maximum or local minimum points, or even global maximum and global minimum points, and also horizontal points of inflection. And knowing how to calculate the coordinates of stationary points is essential in our studies of calculus. So let's go right ahead and learn the method. To do that, we're going to work through a couple of examples. And the first example we have here. We're asked to find the coordinates of any stationary points along the curve defined as y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 1. Well, to do so, let me start by moving this question to the side, like so, and now we can get started. So to find the coordinates of a stationary point, we're going to follow a three-step method. The first step, step one, we need to find the derivative function. So I'll just write find dy dx. Now looking at the function we have here, we have y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 1. So I'll just copy that. That's y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 1. And to differentiate this, we use the well-known power rule, which would look something like this. dy dx equals to 2x minus 4. And of course, the 1 that we have here vanishes when we differentiate. Okay, that's the end of step 1. We now have the derivative function. We move on to step 2, and in step 2, we need to solve the following equation. dy dx equals to 0. Remember, at a stationary point, the derivative function equals to zero. Consequently, we need to solve this equation. So in this case, since the derivative is 2x minus 4, we need to solve the following. 2x minus 4 equals to zero. So we solve this equation for x, which leads to 2x equals to 4. And finally, that leads to x equals to 4 over 2. In other words, x equals to 2. And that's the end of step two. And at this stage, we can state that the curve has one stationary point and its x coordinate is two. We now move on to step three. And in step three, we need to calculate the y coordinate of the stationary point. To calculate the y coordinate, we need to go back to the function we were initially given. Remember, that was y equals to x squared minus four x plus one and we replace x by the x-coordinate of the stationary point. Remember, that was x equals to 2. So that would be y equals to 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 1. That's equal to 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 1. That's equal to 4 minus 8, which is negative 4, plus 1. Finally, y equals to negative 4 plus 1, that's equal to negative 3. And we now have the y-coordinate of the stationary point. So we can state that this curve has a stationary point with coordinates 2, negative 3. And we're done. Now we can confirm this just by looking at this function's curve. Indeed, if we plot the curve y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 1, it would look like this. Looking at this curve, we can see quite clearly here that this curve indeed has a stationary point with coordinates 2, negative 3. In fact, it's a global minimum point, and at that point, we can state that the derivative dy dx must equal to 0. Furthermore, we can also point out that at this stationary point, the tangent to the curve is horizontal. And there we have it. That's how we can find a stationary point. Let's look at another example. In this example, we're asked to find the coordinates of any stationary points along the curve defined as y equals to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x minus 1. Well, once more, let me start by moving this question to the side, like so, and now we can get started. 
Remember, to find the coordinates of any stationary points, we follow the three-step method. That was step one. We need to find the derivative function. That's find dy dx. Well, given our function is y equals to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x minus 1, we use the power rule for differentiation to find the derivative function. And in doing so, we find the following. dy dx equals to 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. And that's our first step done. We move on to step 2. And in step 2, remember, we need to solve dy dx equals to 0. In other words, we're looking for the values of x at which the derivative equals to 0, since those will be the x-coordinates of any stationary point this curve has. Now, using the fact that dy dx equals to 6x squared plus 6x minus 12, solving dy dx equals to 0 means we have to solve 6x squared plus 6x minus 12 equals to 0. Now, say you're asked this question in an exam and that you're allowed to use a calculator, you could use it to solve this quadratic equation. Alternatively, you could solve it by hand as follows. We notice that we can divide throughout by 6 and state that this equation has the same solutions as x squared plus x minus 2 equals to 0. We can now solve this by factoring. Indeed, we can rewrite this quadratic in factored form as x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals to 0. And now, using the null factor law, we can state that this equation will equal to 0 if either x plus 2 equals to 0 or x minus 1 equals to 0. That leads to x equals to negative 2 or x equals to 1. And we now have the two solutions to dy dx equals to 0. Since there are two values of x, it means that this function has two stationary points, and these are the x-coordinates of those stationary points. We now move on to step 3, and in step 3 we need to calculate the y-coordinates of the stationary points. Since this function has two stationary points, one at x equals to negative 2, the other at x equals to 1, we're going to have to calculate two different y-coordinates, and we do so using the original function. So let's start with the stationary point with x-coordinate x equals to negative 2. So I'll just write when x equals to negative 2. The y-coordinate will be y equals to 2 times negative 2 cubed plus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 12 times negative 2 minus 1. And remember, all I have done here is replace the x inside our original function by the x-coordinate of the stationary point. That's negative 2. Calculating this leads to 2 times negative 8 plus 3 times negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus 12 times negative 2, which is negative 24, minus 1. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, plus 3 times 4, which is 12, minus negative 24, which is plus 24, minus 1. Negative 16 plus 12 is negative 4, plus 24, minus 1. And negative 4 plus 24 is 20, minus 1. Finally, the y-coordinate is 20 minus 1, which equals to 19. So we can state that one of the stationary points has coordinates negative 2, 19. We now calculate the y-coordinate of the second stationary point. Remember, that had x-coordinate x equals to 1. So when x equals to 1, y is equal to 2 times 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared, minus 12 times 1, minus 1. That's equal to 2 times 1, plus 3 times 1, minus 12 times 1, minus 1, which equals to 2 plus 3, minus 12, minus 1. 2 plus 3 is 5, so we have 5 minus 12, minus 1. And 5 minus 12 is negative 7, so we have negative 7 minus 1. 
And finally, y is equal to negative 7 minus 1, which is negative 8. So we can state that the second stationary point has coordinates 1, negative 8. And we're done. We now know the coordinates of both stationary points of this curve. And once more, we can confirm this result by looking at the function's curve, which looks something like this. Looking at this curve, we can see quite clearly that it has two stationary points, one local maximum and one local minimum. And the local maximum has coordinates negative 2, 19, whereas the local minimum has coordinates 1, negative 8, which confirms the results we just found. And once again, we can state that at these stationary points, the derivative dy dx is equal to 0, and the tangent to the curve at these points is horizontal. And there we have it. That's how we can find the coordinates of stationary points along a curve's length using the derivative. And that's it for this tutorial.